Please stand. The entrance antiphon. This holy man fought to the death for the law of his God. It did not fear the words of the godless, for he was built on solid rock. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. My brothers and sisters, as we gather together on this feast day of St. Blaise, let us acknowledge our sins. And so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were said to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, the supplications of your people that your supplications of your people make under the patronage of the martyr Saint Blaise, and grant that they may rejoice in peace in this present life, and find help for life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, in your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. You have also forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as children. My son, do not disdain the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. He scourges every son he acknowledges. Endure your trials as discipline. God treats you as his sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? At the time, all discipline seems a cause not for joy, but for pain. Yet later, it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet that what is lame may not be dislocated, but healed. Strive for peace with everyone, and for that holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one be deprived of the grace of God, that no bitter roots spring up and cause trouble, through which many may become defiled. The word of the Lord. Be Responsorial Psalm. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed, he remembers that we are dust. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. But the kindness of the Lord is from eternity to eternity towards those who fear him, and his justice toward children's children among those who keep his covenant. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. Alleluia, Alleluia, 
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has, he been give, has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, a few of you may have been looking at your watch and go, Ah, Father... Father, where are you? Uh, well, Father was trying to memorize the St. Blaise prayer in rapid succession because of the fact that it is his feast day. And when you don't have it written down anywhere, you have to make sure you go over and over in your head again, do I really got this? Because I have to do this in about five minutes. But, you know, St. Blaise's feast day that we celebrate today is one of those feast days that I think, again, continues to be something that's eminently reliable. Now, one of the things that I had to remember is that prayer of blessing. You saw me bring out the candles. But the problem is, is we can't, due to COVID, we can't even do the placing on, the, you know, the candles on each side. I have to do it just a blessing from up here and give it to you that way. But at the same time, I had to remember the prayer at least enough so that it got stuck up here in the head. So that way I could give you that prayer once over. But out of all the days, it's probably a very appropriate day that we have this because, you know... Well, we, well, it's not necessarily disease of the throat. I mean, COVID has been going on for quite some time. So it's not a bad thing that we celebrate, you know, this again, bishop and martyr, as the prayer says today. We have to remember that during his time, he actually had to go into exile because the persecution started. And he ended up almost as a hermit for a very long time until ultimately somebody found him out and brought him before the governor. Now, as they led him towards the governor, it was during this time that, you know, one of uh, those entrusted to his care, one of, again, the lay people in the diocese, shows up to St. Blaise with her child choking on a fishbone saying, please, you know, Bishop, help him. And as the story goes, St. Blaise leaned over and whispered a small prayer, and suddenly the bone dislodged and he was saved. So that's where we get again this tradition of St. Blaise being the uh, one who protects against every disease of the throat and every other illness. But as we join together, we have to rem remind ourselves that to live this again, this gospel message, to live this call to discipleship, to be among those who would be invoked this many years on from their passing means that there's a necessary sacrifice. When we hear those words of Jesus, take up your cross and follow me, they're not easy words. They're very difficult. But yet every saint that we hold up, every saint we look at, in some way, shape, or form, had to take up their cross to follow Christ. And again, our Lord admonishes the hosts who don't. He goes to his hometown, he's trying to proclaim the good news, and everybody goes, you know, Hey, isn't that Jesus? Didn't we know him growing up? Don't you remember him when he was this high? I don't know. Like, I, I don't know where he got all this, but, you know, 
I knew him back when, so I, I can't even do anything. And it says Jesus was astonished at their lack of faith, that he could not do anything because nobody, or almost nothing, aside from healing a few people who had that gift of faith at that point, to be able to bring them along because everybody had closed themselves off to God. It's a reminder in our own time to be alert to that possibility. That sometimes God is reaching out to you and I and trying to act in this very powerful way in our lives. And he's proposing this gift, this call to us. And we can sometimes say, yeah, Jesus, I don't know. I think I've got a better idea. Or as a matter of fact, I like this person over here who's saying this instead. I don't like the totality of your truth. I'd rather select this and this a la carte, and I'd rather cast the rest off over there. With all due respect, my friends, that's not how this works. The faith is not just a revolving doctrine. It's revolving the teaching of a person. And a person that if we hold as the true Son of God, the second person of the Holy Trinity, means we might want to listen to him on all things. The saints illustrate that and that they witness to that with their lives throughout the entirety of Christianity. So we have to stop pretending like we can recast the entire, again, Christian experience in our own image and likeness. That's not how this is going to work. That's not how we're going to be saints. Because saints inevitably will find some piece of Jesus' teaching that will be decisively out of season when they enter into that dialogue of the faith, of faith with the world. And it will cost you something. Make no, again, bones about it. It's going to cost you something to be a Christian. It costs St. Blaise something. It costs Jesus Christ everything. And it costs, again, throughout the history of the world, all the saints, something in particular. We have to ask ourselves whether we're ready to step up and uh, understand that our faith is going to cost us something in today's day and age. Because if you stand up for the totality of the faith, if you don't, if you don't sit there and go, well, I'm going to do faith a la carte, then you're going to get in trouble. You're going to get into a place where people are going to get angry with you. They're going to get upset with you. Are you willing to go there? Are you willing to follow the paths of the saints like St. Blaise who step into that realm and say, I'm not abandoning it. I'm staying the course, no matter what happens. Because that's the question we all face. We're always going to be in that place where something is going to upset the culture. In different times and different seasons, it's been different things. But today there's plenty, I'm sure, in a post-Christian age that's going to upset just enough people to get, all the, you know, get them upset and put you in a precarious situation. Are we willing to stay the course? It's that we ask for today as we ask for St. Blaise's intercession to be faithful and to also ask for that little gift of healing as we receive that blessing of the throat that we get to receive each year. So with that in mind, my dear friends, I invite you to stand, bow your heads, as I give you the blessing of St. Blaise. And through the intercession of St. Blaise, Bishop and Martyr, may God deliver you from every disease of the throat and from every other illness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Confident in our Lord and Savior, let us lift our prayers before him on this feast day of St. Blaise. For preachers who pass on, the, on, on Christ's wisdom, we pray to the Lord. For prophets who speak bold words among their own people, we pray to the Lord. For children who astound their elders with insight, we pray to the Lord. 
For the stubborn who close their ears to the words of challenge, we pray to the Lord. For those who seek healing from their teacher, we pray to the Lord. For all who wait in death for the salvation offered by a carpenter, we pray to the Lord. As we remember Brian Silver in the prayer of this liturgy, let us also offer up our own prayers to the Lord in the silence of our own heart. We pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, we ask your abundant grace and mercy to be poured into our hearts, that on this feast day of St. Blaise, we may witness courageously to the gift of faith, always allowing ourselves to go deeper, even in a world that rejects many aspects of it. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify our offerings by your blessing, O Lord, we pray. And by your grace, may we be set afire with that flame of your love, through which St. Blaise overcame every bodily torment. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, for you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy you give ardor to their faith. To their endurance you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we with all the host of angels cry out and without end we acclaim. Holy. Holy, holy, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them in to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. With Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer to one another a sign of peace. Anius Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Anius Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, is ever no hobis Adius Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
the communion antiphon. Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me, says the Lord. We now pray the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray, give us that determination which made your blessed martyr, St. Blaise, faithful in your service and victorious in suffering. Through Christ our Lord. We now pray the prayer of St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, 
by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Have a great day, everyone.